Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm just going to do a talk through of what was a fairly average day working with my personal horses. So first things first, I turned Pogo, who is my two-year-old grey thoroughbred gelding, and Milo out together to have a bit of a play before I rode Milo. This I don't do very often and it was mostly for Pogo's benefit and mine. I just wanted to see how his weight was looking and see how he was moving. He's turned out all winter, Pogo is, so he's just growing and not really doing anything right Right now and I hadn't seen him move like since September other than when he's playing out in the field so I just decided to let them have a play and they had an absolutely grand old time. My horses are turned out 24 7 so letting them play in the arena is more so for their benefit to be able to watch them move on even ground in a controlled setting. I think turnout is exceptionally important, one of the absolute basics of horse care. These two were quite wired and playful because it was the, one of the first clear days in a little while, so you can see Milo hurting Pogo and they're just being silly young boys, as they should be. After his little run, Pogo is put back out in the field with his half-sibling and my other thoroughbred, George. Pogo will be started back under saddle in the springtime when he is three, but until then he just be chillin'. For tacking up, I always tie Milo to this post. There's cross ties in the barn, but he really doesn't like it in there with the low ceilings and whatnot, so he ties here. I never hard tie my horses, meaning they are always in leather halters and generally always tied to twine or just ground tied. I've seen way too many accidents from hard tied horses, so in my opinion for safety with flight animals it just isn't worth it. Anyways, Milo loves doing face plants in the mud and was especially offended by me wanting to brush his ears this day. He does, however, love having his forelock brushed, so we found common ground and he quickly got over himself. Blankets are a lifesaver in a muddy climate. Milo would likely be covered in wet mud every day from his mud baths otherwise. Milo also needs to be blanketed due to his clip, which serves the purpose of keeping him cooler and less sweaty during work in the winter. Anyways, for tack, I change my saddle pads up quite often, so today we are using our right horse Horse Initiative Ogilvy Baby Pet. The Right Horse Initiative is a great organization that works to help promote and adopt out rescue horses. So this saddle pad is perfect for Milo. A lot of people swear by half pads, but if your saddle is properly fitted to your horse without needing a pad, they're much better off not wearing one. This Amerigo Vega saddle is fitted to Milo and is wolf locked, so we do not use a half pad. When our custom saddle arrives, we might have it fitted to be able to use a very slim gel pad underneath, but we will see what the fitter says. Generally speaking, for the average horse, a well-fitting saddle is all they need for shock absorption if they have the appropriate muscle underneath. The girth I'm using is the Magic Keep Super Horse Girth. It's super comfortable and anatomical for the horse. Milo wears a size 50, but we are still breaking in the elastic. Sometimes he really needs to suck it in to help me do it up, and he generally doesn't do that. I will only buy and use double elastic girths as they keep the pressure more balanced on the billets than a single elastic and they are also so much more convenient. Anyways, I do Milo's girth up slowly so I always need to check it once or twice before riding because I like to walk him to the arena before tightening it up more. I usually pick Milo's feet and wrap his legs before tacking, but for whatever reason this day I did it backwards. Milo's hooves have always been his most finicky body part. His right front in particular is especially horrible. You'll notice that that one has a pore in sole pad to help protect his sole for the time being because the rocky footing at one of his past clinics really bruised his soles. Anyways, I'm wrapping his legs with the Incredaware exercise bandages. This was my second or third time using them and I love them. They keep his legs cold and tight and if you hose them with cold water after your rides, they become ice bandages. They're thicker and wider than a lot of wraps with a lot more stretch, so really make sure you're solid at wrapping and don't over tighten them if you use them because they're more like a tensor bandage which makes them easy to wrap too tight. Milo's jumping bit is the Centaur Eco Pure Egg Butt with a peanut. It is a rubber coated double jointed bit that is made to accommodate smaller mouths and lower palates. His jumping bridle is the Barnes Tack Room Wide Nose Bridle. I do occasionally ride Milo bitless for jumping, but he is significantly better for it in a bit. He's more responsive, softer, and just happier. And also the fluffy nose piece on my jumping bitless bridle he is afraid of. So <laughs> if it were a bit and I posted a video of him running away from it when I tried to bridle him, I bet you guys would be saying it was abusive. I use my bridles on a lot of different horses, so I often have to adjust the sizing, especially for Milo since he has got such a small head. 
My saddle is a 17 and a half inch Amerigo Vega and I use the Tech Stirrups Venice Safety Stirrups. My mom missed filming the warm-up, so don't worry, I don't just directly go into the arena and start cantering. Our warm-ups start at the walk where we work on lateral work and bending mainly. Practicing his haunches in and starting to ask for half-pass is much easier for him at the walk. So on jump days, I integrate it into my walk warm-up and only do it at the walk. Anyways, Milo's canter has always been his weakest skate. As it has increased in quality, the quality of his jumping has also increased. He still doesn't have a fantastic canter by any means, but it is a lot better and his canter is one of the harder gates to improve. For working on changes, a dressage foundation has been huge for Milo. He is still figuring out his hind end, which is why he will kick for some of the changes. I alternate between asking for flying and simple changes to try to get him to wait more. He got the cleanest change he's ever gotten off camera this day and that just seems to be the way it goes. When we do start jumping, much of Milo's kicking out or bucking now is associated with trying to get his hind end for changes. He still misses or is late for some changes, but tends to offer the hind end half of the change first, which is great, and he is also not trying to gallop into the changes as much. Changes are hard for him to comprehend mentally, so he gets very fizzy and stressed, which is why I don't typically ask for changes on course or work on them too often. Doing them infrequently and just getting him to do them as quietly as possible has been super important in getting him to relax. Anyways, the grid I have set here is three bounces to a one stride vertical with a spooky gait. A lot of horses hate this gait as they can see through it. I use bounces to get horses like Milo quicker with their front end and shoulders, and also going through the grid bravely. For Milo, adding questions prior to the scariest jump of the gymnastic has thrown him off a ton in the past and caused him to stop. So as he gets braver, we are increasing the complexity of what is asked. When Milo misses changes, it's no big deal, and I know a lot of people on here expect him to have full changes because he's been in training so long and that's fine. But for me, the importance of having a change that will be okay for dressage test comes above getting a quick change. A lot of horses on the hunter-jumper circuit change the front end first and then the back, which isn't technically a proper change from a dressage standpoint. So with our intent with training these changes, we're trying to teach him the correctness that comes from dressage, which requires him to learn a whole lot of foundational movements first to get the change and then it'll all eventually build to teach him a whole lot of really fun dressage. Sorry that I keep going off on a tangent about other things, but anyways, as Milo gets warmed up, the height of the grids is put up. Milo jumps significantly better over higher fences now. He is loose through his back, quick with his front end, and his hind end is improving as he is jumping more bravely and less scared. He still has an unorthodox way of jumping through the hind end, quite often, but this is why we've trained so many grids and tons of very wide oxers, to try to get him to jump more correctly and loosely behind, but at the end of the day, he does have his own unique style and it's just a matter of how much are we going to be able to improve on the hind end if he generally has a preference of how he likes to use it. This, in my opinion, was one of our best jump schools in quite a while. Milo was brave to every fence, which I see more readily in recent months, but his level of consistency through the grid and correctness over the fences was a lot better than the last time we worked grids. He is using his shoulder very well and being very tidy and careful. The most common fences for Milo to stop at over the last few years have often been wider oxers, so training these larger oxers has been very important for both his bravery and building a more careful and flexible hind end. Overall, I've seen big changes in Milo's entire demeanor over fences. He is much more game, he understands his job, and feels confident about it now. This is something I'm over the moon about, and it may have taken Milo a lot longer than other horses to get here, but here he is. I'm glad I took the time to persist, but at the rate that I felt he was most comfortable learning at. It has paid off. Even if he may still buck after some fences, most of the time it is him trying to be a good boy by helping me get the change, even if his help is exuberant.